Bilsden Brook taking on the boys in the Queen Anne? So that is only a possibility. I thought that race might cut up. It actually hasn't cut up as much as I thought it might. And what did you make of her comeback? At I thought excellent. You know, she had a seven pound bandage. She really did run a, a, as good a race as she's ever run. And she was unlucky to get caught late. He hung on to her for as long as he could and she ran a super race. Couldn't be more pleased with the, with the comeback run. And how much will she come on from that? Oh, she'll come on, but she's massive filly. She will have come on probably seven, eight pounds for that. Posted, not beaten far in that same race at Kempton. What's the plan with her? She ran a very good race. She surprised me, I've got to say. Um, and that's probably one of the best races she's run. She would have needed it and she could be competitive. Early on in the year, you'd have said she probably wasn't as good as that. But that was a very, very good run. If she picks up off that, she's going to have a chance. Well done, Fox. Super run. I was delighted with that race. It's such a shame that being drawn out there in those sprints at Newmarket last weekend, you really didn't stand a chance. And the fact that she still ran well from that draw is a very good sign. And he is going to win some nice races this year. Whether it's going to be at Ascot or not is a difficult ask, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. There's an awful lot of improvement to come out of that run. He was off the track for the guts of a year. And he took a keen hold in his races last year. Has he learned to settle a bit better now? He has, yeah. Yeah, he's, you know, he won't get a chance to, to pull over the five and six furlongs they go at Ascot. Cloak of Spirits, great run in the Guineas. How's she come out of it? Super run. She's come out of the Guineas. She looks fantastic. She's now only got two pounds left to put on, two kilos to put on, and she'll put that on in no time. She doesn't need any more work. She's fit now, and all roads lead to the Coronation Stakes, where hopefully that track will suit her. The first thing Andrea said when he got off, he said, I'm not sure she likes that track. I don't know many horses that do, you know, but she'll prefer Ascot round a bend and a flat track much more. And any concerns at all about running her back so quickly after? Oh, of course there are. But that is a question you don't know until two furlongs down, whether she's either sinking or she's swimming. And that, that's, you know, I can't work her to see her well-being as that will leave her race at home. So we just have to assume she's fine. She looks fine, she's moving fine. That's all you can, you can base it on. And Threat goes for the St. James's <coughs> Palace. Having seen the Guineas, are you pleased I've just bored all them? these poor people about what I think of Threat many times. He's working super, I just hope he stays the mile. He's quite keen sometimes when he's works. Not, not stupid keen, but just a little bit overzealous, but he's a very good horse. And I do think, to a certain extent, he will have an advantage over those horses that have just run in a guinea sort of 10 days previous, um, or, or 14 days previously. Um, he will have an excellent chance, and he too, our main thinking behind going straight to the St. James Palace Stakes was to go for the flat track, not for the Roly Mar. And having seen the Guineas, you'd be fancying your chances against the likes of Pinatubo? Well, I think that's a bit of a... Not a bad question, and I'd love to answer it yes, I do, but he's a very good horse, and you can't condemn him on one run that wasn't quite as spectacular as his previous runs, but I'm very happy with our horse. He's moving great. Everybody knows the sort of, you know, ranking in which we hold him here, so I... I'd like to think we've got a Group 1 horse moving forward from the St. James Palace Stakes. But if the real horse that I see at home on the gallops comes out, he can be very hard to beat. And so in terms of horses like Olympic Glory, Toronado, King of Change, is he in that bracket? Yeah, I think he could well be. I'd hope so. Yeah, uh, he'll need to be. <laughs> he, he sulked the other day. Sean just tried to take him back coming out the gates. He hit the first undulation and he just said, no, bugger this, I'm out. And he just, he came home, literally wouldn't blow a candle out. Um, he's much better than that. We go back to six furlongs from eight furlongs and let him rip. And a flat track. And flat, yeah. You know, look at the best races he's run in his life. He's been super impressive at York, flat track. He won his maiden at Ascot, flat track. Why has he run terrible? Newmarket twice. Out of all the four runs, the two flat tracks, he's unbeaten. So I'm going back there. Um, quick word on your, your two year olds then, first of all, Concessions, smart winner at Chelmsford. Yes, she qualifies for the Chesham um, and she might well go there. Um, I've spoken to Sheikh Nasser and, and his guys and they're keen to go to Ascot but um, I just happened to look it up the other night and she does qualify for the Chesham so that's seven furlongs that she ran over there will suit her. And she's a smart filly, a very classy filly and one that you can't help really liking. She's no trouble, she's sweet and she's nice and quiet and just does her job. 
Um, Clarendon Cross, uh, third on debut. Yes, he's another one. It qualifies for the for the Chesham. I thought he ran a lovely race the other day, and he was probably the horse to take out the race. So, on that basis, he might well take his chance as well. If not, we'll just wait for a maiden and, and go the other way, and might look at something like the Superlative Stakes at Newmarket in the dry meeting. And Cirrus was second in a, a very competitive Phillies maiden at Newmarket. Yes. She ran a super race. She did the donkey work. I think she might have been beaten by a very good filly, unfortunately. But we're going to take our chance in the Albany and uh, give the shareholders a bit of sport. And she hopefully will be very competitive. She's a very, very classy filly, very tall, bit of daylight underneath her. So she will get better as the year goes on. But I think it's a nice opportunity for her to try and get bag something big on the way up. And Long Lai entered at the weekend. He, hopefully he's a smart horse. He's in the Chesham, qualifies as well. So I took him to Kempton three weeks ago and he worked surprisingly very well. You know, very pleasing on the eye, sat last, came through them. I was like, ooh. So we've sort of taken our time with him since then and hopefully we'll see what he's made up on Saturday at Doncaster um, and go from there. Friday or Saturday? I think it's Saturday, yeah. 72 hour decks now, it sort of seems like it's all on the same day. Of your handicappers, you got ten in the opening race, the New Curtain race, the Buckingham Palace. Who's likely to to run, and and which would be your best? The opening race, you had the seven furlong. So, Motikayala, wherever he goes, you'll have a very good chance. Whether it's here or the Hunt Cup, a lot of these will be involved in the Hunt Cup as well. Oh, this is us would have an excellent chance in whatever race he runs in, but I'm not sure if he'll get in quite yet. Um, War Glory obviously has a chance, and Ziggle Pops that they put up five pounds for winning the other day. Um, Brian Epstein, he might go there or the Hunt Cup, and Borodan, he's a classy horse, would have a chance wherever he goes. So the, you know, they're all nice horses, but we don't know whether they're going to get in yet or not. And you know, Brian Epstein, Motta Kyle, um, Magical Wish, Uzo, wherever he goes, and Kesar will will all have chances. But I mean, there's always a lot of horses wanting to get into these races, so you will have. If it's a 0 to 105, you'll need to be pretty much 100 to get in, at least, I would say, this year. A bit more on Brian Epstein. What did you make of his comeback second? Oh, delighted with him. You know, he's, he's, he'd been off for a whole year um, since Derby Day last year, and that was a super run. He might have got there a little too soon, but, I mean, that's negligible, and he's going to have needed it anyway. Bumped into a well-handicapped horse, and he's going to be bang on for Ascot. And also Uzo placed at Newmarket. Super run. Ryan himself said he thought he went too soon, but you know he didn't think he was going to pick up the way he did. He picked up and went, Phew, and quick and impressively, and then just got tired going to the hill. And I honestly thought he was mugged. Ziggle pops. Yeah, he was impressive the other day. I think putting him up five pounds is a bit excessive, personally. But that handicapper is normally right. Um, he's been threatening to be a very nice horse for a long time, but he'd have been a very unlucky loser. Um, yeah, and he's a horse on the up, so yeah, he's, he's a horse to keep an eye on. Dark Lady? Dark Lady is not going to go. We're just, she just got too big. She had a setback just before um, she was due to run in the Guineas and gave her some time off, and she gets very big. So we're just going to leave her be, and we might look at something like the Falmouth. There's races all summer for her, so there's no rush just to get her back for Ascot. Um, she, she would be too heavy and she would need it and there's no point going there if you're not 110%. King of Change is fine, but like last year, we were going to go to the Lockinge and then on to Royal Ascot. Now we've missed the Lockinge. Royal Ascot, the grounds will be very quick probably and we'll just go on to what we did last year, which is straight into the autumn, start maybe in the Moulin QE2 or Champion Stakes and then go on from there. So there's plenty of good racing in him yet. And at this stage, best chance of the week? Um, Mum's Tipple has a chance in the six furlong race. We're going to hit the gates and let him roll this week. Um, Cloak of Spirits has a good chance. Threat has a great chance. Do you know what it's like at Royal Ascot? If you think you're a certainty, you should be running and you'll probably finish fourth or fifth. Like you never know, sometimes it happens. But you don't often... Royal Ascot is where the horses become extremely good horses. You can go there with like a king of change. OK, they're already good horses, but the ones I'm taking, that's where they, they will make their name, hopefully.